Hello and welcome to my channel. Just taking a little moment of silence um, to observe uh, some space for the kind of spicy video that I uh, released over the weekend. I'm working on being a sweeter, more positive person, but uh, sometimes I am triggered. <laughs> and seeing my pretty privileged video hit a million videos, I mean, excuse me, hit a million views, clearly was, uh, was triggering for me. It brought up a lot of resentful emotions and um, I just wanted to honestly, honestly talk about it. So this is my YouTube channel and I did so. For those of you that watched it and received it well, thank you. For those of you that watched it and were like, this is too much, I totally understand. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about something else and I wanna start this video off with a sincere apology because this content was sent to me over and over again when it was first going down online and I was very resistant to talking about it, mostly because of other content that I've talked about on this channel because I know the kind of criticism that comes from talking about this thing. I think I was just exhausted from visiting this sort of, um, uh, this sort of, of area of the internet. But when I kept seeing it come up, I said, you know what, I do want to put my two cents in on this because I feel like I have not fully evolved from being in this space, but I know what it's like to have those feelings, to be in that mindset, to be frustrated. And I felt I could offer a perspective on it. If you are a person who sent one of these videos, one of these tweets to me, and I was like, I don't wanna talk about that, I do apologize, okay? I am talking about it, here we go. You saw the title. The subject of today's video is, what happens and how do you cope when you're the friend who is unapproached. So I wanna start this off with a video that went viral. It, it started off on TikTok, it went over to Twitter, it was posted on Instagram, and it was a young woman who was talking about what happens when she goes out with her friends. Ladies, can we start a thread? Cause I wanna talk about something that I haven't heard. And I just wanna know if anyone else, any women are experiencing this. Quick backstory, coming up, I always had low self-esteem. I never felt attractive. I didn't really have friends. I was pretty much a loner. And so as an adult, I still have some of those thoughts in my mind. And it could honestly affect how I present myself when I'm out. But with that said, I have a lot of gorgeous friends, okay? Everybody's pretty. Everybody's pretty. Can we talk about how we are not the woman that's like ever approached in the friend group? More specifically, how you internalize it, how you deal with it. You know, because it's hard for me to believe that I'm the pretty girl when I'm out and men don't approach me. I tell you guys all the time that, like, I get the most attention from guys on the internet. Not out in public. Not, I, I, For the most part, I'm never approached, just to keep it a buck. Or I'm approached by super older guys, like 50 and up. Nobody in my age range. And I don't care how many times my friends tell me I'm pretty. People at church tell me I'm pretty. When it's all said and done and I'm in a room with them, I'm never seen. And it's kind of hard to deal with. And then you can't even really talk to your homegirls about it. Because if you tell them that they're going to be self-conscious about how they are in your presence. And you don't want to dim their light because you love them. But like, what do I have to do? Distance myself from pretty people? Like, that that doesn't make sense. I don't know. <laughs> How do y'all deal with it? Do you talk to your homegirls? Do you just internalize it? Do you talk to other people? Do you just ignore the feelings? Like, because that's my thing. When I'm by myself and I meditate or I look at myself in the mirror, I feel beautiful. And then I get around other pretty girls and I feel like the ugly duckling. And nobody can convince me that I'm attractive. That's why it's hard for me to receive compliments. That's why it's hard for me to trust that what people are saying they mean. Because my life experience tells me otherwise. Otherwise. So how do you deal with it if you are dealing with it? I think anybody who's ever been in that position before knows what that's like. In fact, there was a social media trend um, a couple months ago. I don't know who sings the song. I'll put their name up here. But the uh, 
the lyrics are she brought a but it's Jack it's Jack Harlow and the lyrics are and people basically took that and acted out what it was like when a person who is interested in one person in the group specifically when it's men who are interested in one woman in the group how they speak one way to the person they're interested in and completely just just do not even acknowledge the other people in the group or when they don't find the other person in the group physically attractive they might just go ahead and full-on be rude to that person you know i remembered that trend and so whenever this young woman put out her video of course my question was why are we acting like this is a big deal okay so really quickly my this is a big deal comment is in relation to the some of the backlash that i saw coming from this video um, after it was posted on Instagram. Now, of course, I cannot find that video now because this was so long ago and the account that it was posted on, I believe post no less than like 12 times a day. So I cannot find where it was posted on Instagram. But when I was going through the Instagram comments, I was getting increasingly angry because it was reminding me of things that I've heard said to me before, just by people who didn't get it, who were acting like, you know, this was something that they were just and you know, just confused by and and thought was kind of a ridiculous thing to be worried about. So um, I do want to say, though, that this young woman had an incredibly kind uh, response paid to her over on TikTok. Her audience there was super sweet. There was a lot of people that were able to resonate and told her so and met with her with a lot of love. And so in my video today, I'm going to really be talking about, um, and you know, some of the more uh, some of the comments that I saw that were just people that didn't get it and didn't understand. And because it, you know, kind of feeds into why every time somebody says something like this, this sort of thing goes viral. You have half people who like understand and you have half people who are like, shut up and get over it. But I do want to say that she got some really positive comments over on TikTok, but a lot of the negativity came from Twitter and from Instagram. And I cannot find uh, that Instagram video anymore. So if you have it, or if you know what account posted it, please post in the comments below. Why is this earth shattering? Of course, I do know why she had the effect on people that she did. Uh, she was crying. She was very emotional. She actually asked for advice. Um, and all of the content that I think I've put out, I've never said like, can someone please help me understand? Okay, really quickly, I just wanted to provide another cute little interlude because that right there seems like I'm mocking her. I'm not mocking her at all. Um, I actually, when I first watched the video, I had a hard time getting all the way to the end because I resonated so strong with what she was saying. I chose to say this like this right here just now because I'm goofy. Okay, so um, in the event that that young woman does come across this video or anybody who's gone through this sees my video and says, oh my gosh, that was so rude. I did not mean to. I, I actually was watching this back and I was like, why you do that like that? But it's because I'm goofy and not because I intended to mock that girl or her very real emotions or that young woman, excuse me, or her very real emotions that she was expressing when she was talking about this issue. This is just me being goofy. Because here's the thing, I don't think other people can read the situation better than I can because I'm in it. Not that like people can't give me advice because I've definitely taken, um, some advice on certain things uh, that I've seen like in comments that I've seen messaged to me like I've, I've taken advice but when it comes to certain situations that really aren't advisable unless you're actually there in the moment with the person I tend to not be interested in asking for advice but I think that's how she came off so people kind of swooped in and they were trying to help her uh, the other side of that the other side of the reactions were what you expect when a woman voices something like this there was a lot of people telling her that the problem was her and her lack of confidence. There was a lot of people telling her that she shouldn't even be worried about it. When she's out to have fun with the girls, just have fun with the girls. You shouldn't be worried about what's going on with, you know, uh, whatever guys. And there was a lot of people telling her, of course, you know, um, that it was it was her. She actually was unattractive and just be okay with it. And I took issue with all of this and, um, you know, I just, uh, I had I had questions and I had concerns. And so in this video, I wanna talk about that. Um, but I almost did not, I almost chose to just sort of leave this issue just like in the dust. But then I saw this tweet when I was um, on Twitter on my lurking account because I've actually lost my password. I can't get into my regular Twitter account and Twitter's also like falling apart right now. So um, anyway, so I logged onto Twitter I don't follow anyone. I have no, I don't know what's going on, but I log on and this is a tweet that's promoted to me. And this is a young woman that I actually recognize from other social media as well. And she posted this tweet about being the friend who is unapproached. 
and how much it has affected her self-esteem. And almost like clockwork, it was the same, it was the same content, this person saying the same thing. And as I've looked online and as I've, you know, just been observant, there's a lot of people that feel this way and that have the this experience. And so, like I said, in this video, I wanna talk about what that experience is really like, why it's perfectly normal to be upset about it, and what you can do to either cope or change it if you find that that is you and you are in that situation. So first of all, let's talk about what that experience is really like. I have mentioned before, or I've, I've talked before, I've given little anecdotes about times in my life where I've been the friend who I'm hanging out and I'm not approached. Um, specifically, I think the most traumatic were when I was in my early 20s and I was just starting to learn or trying to understand like what my value was in the streets or in, that doesn't sound right but like it like when I went out like what was I able to do like what could I uh what experience was I going to be able to have was I going to be one of those people that was going to go out and come home with the phone full of numbers and have all these dates and things lined up and you know all this fun romantic sexy fun or was I going to be somebody that just occasionally bumped into somebody you know from time to time and went off of that or which is what ended up happening was I gonna be someone that literally was never looked at? And then when I was with a friend who somebody else was trying to talk to, I was viciously ignored to the point where in one situation, I'll, I'll tell you guys one story. I was with a friend at a bar that I have not been back to since this happened. And this happened in 2008. That's how like, it like burned me when it happened. We were in the bar together and we were talking. So she's like sitting on a couch and I'm standing in front of her. And we're having a conversation. Oh, I wasn't standing in front of her, but I was sitting in front of her. And I was sitting like a little bit further back and she was sitting, you know, in front of me. And, you know, we're having a conversation. And out of nowhere, this guy comes up, takes an extra chair that was like next to our table, flips it around, sits in front of me and faces my friend. Like interrupted our conversation and was like, you're not important. I'm focusing on her and proceeded to try and court her and talk to her the entire night. And I was just like, is this real life? With this same person, the same friend. Um, and I, I've described this situation in another video that I have talked about before, but I just bring it up because it, it was so unreal to me when it happened. But I remember being out and uh, we were talking, we were outside like talking and this group of guys came through and they just wanted to get to her. And one of them was so insistent about getting to her that he stepped on my toe and kind of knocked me out of the way in the process. There is something that happens in the wild sometimes, and I know this happened because I've, I've, I have seen it happen, but when a male animal wants to mate with a specific female, if she is surrounded by her young, especially if they're like newborn young, they just got here, the male will eviscerate those newborns so that he can get to that mother, so that he can mate with his target. And I felt like in those situations, that is what I experienced. Like they didn't care about me, about my little baby feelings, what they needed to get to their target. Now, as I've gotten older, I will speak up for myself. And also I think when I was with the person that I was with at the time, she was just sort of coming into her own. She was, she had been like an ugly duckling as a high schooler and in college, and she was just now coming into her womanity. And she didn't understand men's switch up on her. And it literally was just going from a small college town where it's predominantly white to coming to a city where it was, where there were a lot more black people and she was attractive to black men um, more than I was, you know, in that particular situation. And so she didn't understand that. And so when it would happen, it would just kind of throw her off. So I never, I was never angry at her. I was never like, oh, girl, you should have told him because I could see the confusion in her face. And she would try and like include me in the conversation. But sometimes the guys would just be so insistent that I just wasn't important. And so I didn't take it out on my friend, but I definitely took it to heart. And it affected how I felt about myself. And again, now that I'm older, if something like that were to happen, I'll speak up. I'll actually, <laughs> what I will do is I will walk away completely, um, almost in a dramatic fashion and make it a thing. Like that guy was rude. If you don't check him, I'm going to check him. Get your, get your boy, dog. You know, like that guy told that baby in that one video, it's online. I won't play it here, but if you've seen it, you've seen it. But anyway, so that is my experience with being the friend that's unapproached. And those are kind of like dramatic, like violent experiences. But I've also had experiences where just like, 
yeah, you go out and, um, you're just not, you're aware that you're not the target. Now, in my last story time, I did talk about how I have found one single location in the city of Houston, Texas. It's like a Bermuda Triangle of horniness where every time I'm there, I'm, for whatever reason, it's like I give off like an aroma to certain types of men. Usually they're very unhinged and unstable and they are coming after me. And so, you know, that's a thing that happens. But I have still experienced a lot of times not being the one that is looked at, that is wanted, and it has really affected me. For an entire decade of my life, I did not want to go out of the house. I did not want to go to clubs. I did not want to go to bars. And that is terrible because that was the age of my life when I should have been out doing it. <laughs> Nowadays, when I go out, I'm like, are we going somewhere else? But it's 10 o'clock. Whereas back then I could have had the energy to stay up all night, but I just, I was so affected by that behavior from the outside world. And I had other friends who would experience that too. And they also were just like, no, like those places aren't for me. So since I've been through it, I can absolutely say without a shadow of a doubt, it's perfectly normal to feel hurt when something like that happens. And for people that are confused about why that would hurt somebody, you know, and that would say things like, well, it's just, if, if it hurts you, it's cause you're not confident. I'd like to just have a little analogy really quickly. So when you're a child say you're like in the first grade and you get told by your teacher tomorrow everybody needs to wear a blue shirt if you wear a blue shirt you'll get candy it doesn't matter what the blue shirt looks like but if you wear a blue shirt you will get candy and you go in you've got your blue shirt on and according to you and maybe even your parents and the people around you your blue shirt is the best shirt that was in your closet. It's the best shirt that you can find. You love this shirt, right? So you go out and you go to class. And when you get there, the teacher passes out the candy and overlooks you. Can you imagine as a child, you're trying to figure out why wasn't what I did good enough? I followed the rules. I even, you know, consulted the opinions of people that I trust that I know want the best for me and see the best in me. Why wasn't my blue shirt good enough? Why was I missed? And that is the feeling that is created for people when they go out in public and they see their friends being talked to, they see, and I can, you know, I can speak as a, as a woman here, as a heterosexual woman who has experienced this, but that is the feeling that happens. And it happens again and again and again. But in this situation, your blue shirt is whatever outfit, whatever clothing, whatever hairdo, whatever makeup, that you feel fits you best. And the candy is that all important attention and that socialization that is capable of happening in the club, in the bar, in that social setting, instead of in the classroom. That feeling of being left out when you thought you did your best is debilitating. And so I don't understand why people attack when someone says, hey, like I've never approached and it hurts my feelings. I don't understand why people act so obtuse and why they pretend that it's not a hurtful thing. It is. It's definitely hurtful. The other thing I want to say is, um, you know, like with the young lady who expressed her feelings first and I was sent her content and I was like, I don't want to talk about it. In her situation, um, there were a lot of people who said, well, why do you even care? When you go out with your girls, it should be out. You having fun with your girls. You're having a good time. Just go out and have a good time. Don't even care. So I just want to say again that I don't think anybody really enjoys going to the club. I mean, maybe they do, but ultimately I think the goal is to be able to socialize. The goal is to be able to find a mate. The goal is to be able to find, you know, and, and, and enjoy your sexuality possibly. You need to go to these places in order to open these portals and to certain developments for yourself. If those developments don't happen, those developments become delayed. And as a result, you don't cross certain milestones when it is most appropriate for you to cross them. That's why we have movies like The 40 Year Old Virgin. And as a society, we're kind of like, oh, what? How do people get to that state? Well, it's simple. When they're young, when they're in these positions to, to go out and to have these experiences, they're looked over. It doesn't happen. And as a result, these experiences are delayed. And that is very painful. And so whenever anybody says, well, you go out, just have fun with your girls, why would we be out? <laughs> or why would that person be out in a place like this where many before have gone to find 
romantic partners, sexual partners, partners for other types of socialization, why would they go out and immediately forfeit that opportunity? You cannot tell people that in order to find someone, in order to find a man, in order to connect with somebody romantically, that they need to get out of their house. You need to get off the couch. You need to get out, put yourself out there. We can't tell people to do that and then laugh at them or invalidate them when they say, hey, I was trying to do that and I wasn't being noticed. I was being looked over. Those two things are, um, they're not congruent. They don't match. You have to allow for, even if it makes you uncomfortable, you have to allow for the fact that going out, socializing in those ways, it is important. And it sometimes is more important than just hanging out with the same people that you kind of see all the time. Now, I'm not saying that when you go out, you know, say you're with your girls or you're with your boy, you're whomever, that you just abandon them and, and run off to find whatever else you can find. Not at all. Because some nights, you know, it's not about all of that mating and dating and whatever. Some nights it is just about having fun with the people that you love or the people that you like, the people that make you laugh in a social space. But a lot of our motivation for going to those places, especially when we're young, is to find partners so that we can begin to work on moving through those milestones that are gonna make us into the adult men and women that we hope to become. And so whenever people were laughing at this girl and saying, oh God, I don't know, why is it even important? <laughs> but just go, just have fun with your girls. I can't even believe you're, no, you know, it, it gave me flashbacks of people calling me a narcissist when I was like, oh, hey, um, yeah, this kind of hurts my feelings when this doesn't happen. Why do you even notice? Because I'm a human being, because I have body parts that are functioning, thank God, because I have desires, romantic desires, sexual desires, because I know what is possible in these spaces. And when I go to these spaces, I wanna eat too. I wanna have these experiences too, because innately, I am looking to develop. Innately, I am looking to move through these stages of life. So I don't understand why people don't get that and why they try and invalidate that desire and cover it up with, oh, this person just doesn't know how to hang out with their friends. I think that's a very lazy summation and I don't think that was fair. And that was done to that young woman and I didn't like that. The next thing I am going to talk about really quickly is the conversation that I saw around that young woman's like clothing and how she looked. And um, that, what I will say about that is you really do, like beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. And I know that that's cliche and I know that nobody wants to hear that. Um, and I know that that's, that's annoying for me. You know, I mean, here I am right now, you know, dressed like a Charlie's angel. And I behold this and I'm like, this is beautiful. But I know if I was like to go out tonight, like if I'm not in my little Bermuda Triangle of horniness, did I draw a triangle? My Bermuda Triangle of horniness. I know there's a chance that I would just be zoop, looked right over because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And one of the things that's tough about trying to figure out like where you fit, who's gonna find you beautiful is figuring out like where to go. Figuring out like, okay, who's really attracted to me? And, and when I was looking at this woman, I was looking like at the way she dresses and you know, how she has her hair. I immediately, because I think I just have a wider palette for people in general, I was like, oh, I like it. I like her piercings, I like her hair, I like her outfit. And I have seen women like her be loved. I have seen them be, people be all over them. I have seen people be attracted to them. And so I think, you know, when she was being told, um, well, it's you, it's your clothing, it's the way that you're dressed, that's, that's not fair. Because first of all, that is a legitimate style. Like she was wearing a legitimate style. And secondly, there, so, somebody gonna like it, somebody gonna like it. And it might just be that the places that she was going to, that, that wasn't the right demographic for what she was offering physically. And that happens all the time. It really does happen all the time. We really, it is a struggle sometimes to try and figure out, especially if you're in a group and there's different people dressed different ways and there's different people with different interests. Sometimes it's hard to say, okay, well, you know, when we go out, um, we're gonna go to ABCD place because we know there'll be, somebody that wants all of us, you know what I mean? Like the more diverse we are, uh, your friendship group is, sometimes it's harder to find a place where 
you'll be really accepted for all of your different diversities. So it's very, very likely that she's just in the wrong place and finding the right place is exhausting and it, it can be very difficult. But the good news is the right place is probably out there because there was absolutely nothing wrong with that woman. Nothing wrong with the way she dressed, nothing wrong with the way she looked, nothing at all. Okay, so I have given my opinion on that general issue. Um, I just, I get so frustrated whenever anybody says, hey, I've never approached. And other people say, don't worry about it. You're lying. It's not true. Sure, you're approached. Wait, if the person is telling you it's not happening, it, it probably is not happening. And um, if they're telling you that it hurts their feelings, remember how you might feel in any situation where you were left out, where you thought you did your best, but you were skipped over. Where even, and I've noticed this a lot with, with women, other women, um, you know, in certain spaces will say, oh, hey, uh, you look great. Um, you know, this is amazing. You're, you're so pretty. This is wonderful. But you won't get the reception you want from other people, right? Have you ever noticed that? You're, I think there was a, a video that went around last year online and there was a girl saying that she is attractive to other women or she's other women's idea of attractive, but she's not men's idea of attractive. And there was... I think there was a video here on YouTube because I know I went and researched it after I saw that video and I just looked at the different things like scientifically what men are attracted to versus what women are attracted to and men tend to be attracted to larger eyes, higher cheekbones, smaller lips. Like there was there was a thing like scientifically, not necessarily smaller lips, but I'll, I'll put the graphic up here on the screen if I haven't done it already, but there's definitely something to that idea and that concept to where you're the type of woman to where you go out, other women are like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. I just had to tell you, you're so beautiful. Even if they don't mean it romantically or sexually, they're just very aware that you're a gorgeous woman, but you may not get that reaction from men depending upon where you happen to be geographically. And it comes down to the differences sometimes in what men find attractive versus what women find attractive. And so, yeah, when you're in a situation where you are left out for whatever reason, I think it's perfectly valid to say, that hurt my feelings. Even when you can't figure out why that would be happening to you, because everyone else around you is like, you look amazing and we love you. It could be a very, very tough headspace to be in. As someone who has been there a lot, and then as someone who has known the opposite, this is what I will say about how to cope with that and how to possibly change it. So the first thing I will say is it 100% is where you are and where you're going. And unfortunately, this can be something as simple as you're at the wrong club, you're at the wrong bar, you're at the wrong bookstore, you're at the wrong picnic, you're at the wrong but wherever, to you're in the wrong state. And that stings because you know, what if your family is in the state where you live? What if you love where you live and the only thing that's lacking is that attention and that interaction? That that just that just sucks. And honestly, I I'm that's the thing I'm happiest about in my late 30s is that when I was hungriest, um, I was more miserable, right? And now that I'm at this stage, I'm like, yeah, no one said anything to me tonight or looked my way, but I had some excellent cocktails and I'm going home. I'm just, I'm a different person. And that's hormones. That's changes in my brain and my body. Um, you know, I, I don't expect me to have the same desire to be interacted with now as I did 10 years ago. But when you are hungry like that, when you do have that desire, do yourself a favor and just go where people want you. And to figure out where that is, I would say doing something as simple as, you know, uh, looking up your astro cartography. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about astrology again, but there is a, a frame of mind and a way of thinking that basically based on where you were born, there's specific cities that you do best in. So like for me, there's a reason why I always wanted to be in LA. Um, a certain part of me is aligned with that city. There's a reason why when I go to Austin, I have a lot of fun and I don't experience some of the drawbacks that people talk about with Austin. Uh, guys are really nice to me there. I get wonderful matches on my online dating apps when I have them on in that city. Um, of course, I only use Bumble and I've got like executive dysfunction. I refuse to make the first move, but that's the only app I use. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not really trying to date right now anyway. I haven't been a lot, but the times that I have been, it's like a consistent like, what's going on over here? But 
It's because when I looked at my astrocartography, like I was aligned with that city in a certain way. And so that is something you could look into. Also, you could just travel, travel around, look around, go out, have different experiences in different cities and see maybe what might be the best vibe for you. I think one of my biggest regrets in life is wasting my 20s. If I had not let myself get so knocked down, which is really hard, you know, hindsight is 2020, and those were, you know, I was coming from the same experience as my friend, being in kind of a majority small town that was predominantly white, did not have a lot of experience, and you come into the real world and your first experiences are, move out of the way, stomp on your foot, you know, just people not putting no respect on your name at all. It's very hard to, to say to somebody at that point, oh, don't pay attention to that, you rise above it. You know, it's the way the human brain works is in order to rise above something, we have to see evidence of the, something else being possible. And when I didn't see that, I quickly sunk into like almost a decade long depression about it. And I wish that that hadn't happened. I wish that I had gone out to different cities, seen different things, um, and just explored what it was like to be wanted because that's really the only way that you combat and that you grow past never being approached and feeling like you're not you're not what anyone's looking for. The next thing I wanna say, and this is something I've realized here recently, sometimes you aren't approached because society has really changed. We used to live in a time where the only way to meet someone, the, the main way to meet someone was knocking into them in real life, meeting them through friends, meeting them at work, so on and so forth, right? That's not the case anymore. Now we have our phones and we have a lot of people who I would say, Millennials around 33 to like older Gen Z, we have that section of people who really all they've ever done with dating is dating apps. Like they have a lot of experience with that. I think my portion of the millennial generation, so the Zennials, I think that we um, we had to just talk to people in, in public for a long time. Tinder didn't come out till 2012. I was almost 30 years old, you know what I'm saying? But you have a group of, of people now who the very first dates they went on, the very first, I mean, they grew up with these dating apps. And as a result, I don't believe that talking to each other in public, hitting on someone in public, I don't think that it's as commonplace and it's as commonly practiced. One of my very favorite trends online are these videos that I have up here right now where people are, they're being facetious, like they're being sarcastic, but it's 100% also what I think really happens because I know I do it. And basically, as you can see here, people are saying, hey, this is how I look at you when I think you're the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Very quick eye contact. They're not coming over to talk to you. They're not willing to take that big, possibly embarrassing risk right? That won't pay off. And so I used to be a person who was like, oh, it's not, it's not true that people are too intimidated to talk to me. That's not true. But I think when you're the type of personality that I have, which is, um, I love to laugh. I love to dance. I love to, um, I'm very outgoing. I think if you're not on that energy and I come in <laughs> doing all of that, I do think it can, it can maybe make somebody think twice. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to match this right now. I don't, I don't know. And then also I don't think that men are always as, and I can just speak as a heterosexual woman here, but I mean, I'm just gonna talk about anybody. I don't think people are often as confident as we like to think they are. And so coming up to somebody and talking to them, shooting their shot with the possibility of, of it not working out is, um, it's just not a very sexy thought. And so it dawned on me here recently that there's probably a lot of connections that could have been made but people just didn't wanna take the risk. And so I feel like if you're not being approached, definitely don't assume this every time because you might run into situations where you get your feelings hurt. But uh, occasionally, give yourself the benefit of the doubt. I wasn't approached because this person maybe didn't wanna take the risk. And that's not a, that's not a, I don't know, it's not a, uh, a, a it doesn't make me look bad if I say to say hello first. Hey, how's it going? I have done that with certain people and sometimes it's 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 backfired in my face. You know, as we all know, I I had one night where I went out and tried to make the first move a ton of times and it didn't work out. But I have other situations where I have said hello first and even though we didn't get married, we had a fun night. You know, like we we talked, there was conversation. Um I have other situations where I've seen 
people try and maybe they don't come up and overtly hit on someone, but they'll come by and they'll maybe, you know, try and start a little bit of a conversation, maybe just sit a little close to you for a long time. And it's, it's, you got to become almost like a more nuanced reader of the possibilities of a social situation and stop looking at things through such like Victorian eyes. You know, I, the man must come to me and approach me and he must offer 10,000 rubles or whatever. Okay, so last interlude. I do want to say that um, as a society, we have kind of told women, and especially when you're talking about heterosexual, like, you know, between women and men, right? We have told women, and I mean, even I have said, I have I have a video where I literally talking about talk about making the first move, excuse me. And I say, when you make the first move with a man, you should lower your expectations because naturally men are meant to be the hunters and women are supposed to be hunted. But there is a long standing history of a woman at least letting a man know that she is interested and that she's open to his advances. Now, I also know that most men don't need to be told, like they're gonna go after what they want, right? And so that's why you do see and have experiences like I had in my early 20s, like this woman, the young woman in the TikTok video I showed, like she had, where her friends were getting talked to, people are getting approached, we see it all the time. However, for every woman that is approached by a man, it doesn't mean that that's the best man, okay? It doesn't mean that that was the best man in the situation. It doesn't mean that that was the, uh, her best possible match in that situation. That's just the man who had enough confidence and enough personal ambition to go about talking to that woman without caring what happened afterwards. Or he had so much confidence in his role in that social situation that he was like, whatever, I'm gonna go play my part as a man, quote unquote. However, that does not mean that that was the best man for that woman, period. And so I think in general, we have to sometimes sit back and think about, okay, I know that men and women tend to work certain ways, but there is something to the fact that not all men are necessarily going to operate the same way. This kind of reminds me of the whole saying, if he wanted to, he would. And yes, 100%, most people, when they want to do something, nothing's going to stop them. But also things do stop us. Social anxiety stops us. Maybe somebody struck out before. And so they don't think that they can, you know, uh, succeed if they were to try again. Maybe the situation that you're in, there's a status quo, right? There's women that people expect everyone to talk to. So if this man, if he does find you attractive, maybe he's a bit of a coward. Listen, I have been on dates thanks to the internet with men who are like i never would have thought we would have matched it doesn't make sense and i think he's attractive i have a wide enough palette for him but he never he wouldn't he didn't think that i would think that i think what i'm trying to say is you never really know yes most men will approach a woman that they're excited about but you have a lot of men who might not say anything because they don't want to put themselves into a situation that could make them feel bad about themselves or that can make them feel like, you know, I, I they don't want to fail. And so I just think sometimes, like I'm like I'm about to say if I hadn't said it already, we got to just be more nuanced, nuanced, excuse me, about the way we read these situations. When you're not getting approached and you're not getting talked to, is it because you're just hellaciously unattractive or is it because you you're not in front of the right demographic? or the men that are around you don't even know if you'd be open to their advances. There's a lot of different situations and I feel like you owe it to yourself to check off every box before you run home and, you know, try and stick your head in the oven because you're so angry and depressed about the fact that no one spoke to you. Right? Sometimes you have to just kind of say, hmm, he looks interesting. I'm going to say something. Hmm, we'll see what happens. And I don't think that that's a bad way to live life. I really don't. No, you may not be successful. No, you can't always expect the guy to, you know, switch into those comfortable gender roles of, oh, hey, well, now I'm the man in this situation. Would you would you like something? Are you okay? Uh, could I take you out? Somewhere? You know, but you never know. You never know. I met this one guy. He did have a ponytail on his chin, which I didn't like, but that's how our little conversation started. Why did I talk to a man with a chin ponytail? But that's beside the point. The point is, is that I, he was standing there, I was standing there, we started talking. We hung out all day, ultimately. Um, mm -mm. But hey, you know, it can work. So I think if you're not being approached, I think sometimes just give the, give the social situation another glance. 
um, and, and think about, okay, I'm looking at these people, who might I be able to talk to? Who might click with me? You, the only thing you have to lose is maybe a little bit of embarrassment. I've, I've been there, I lived. I would rather talk to people and test the waters then go home every night and scream cry into a pillow because I'm still alone and untouched because I already did that from the ages of 19 to 29, okay? Or, and I took small breaks in between when I was dealing with some fool, but I'm just saying, I've already done that. So definitely don't take it so personally. If you're not being approached, realize that sometimes other people have other thoughts, other commitments. They do have social anxiety. It's not really how some people get down anymore. Sometimes people think it might be disrespectful. They don't want to end up on somebody's podcast or vlog. Oh, this man came and tried to talk to me. You know, so just consider more options other than just, I am unattractive because there really is, I, I have seen, I, because I've been single most of my life, I've really paid attention to, is it because I'm unattractive or because I'm just unlucky or because now I know it's probably just because I'm just unlucky, but I've seen so many people that have so many different faces and body shapes and, and they've got partners and they, I mean, you know, so don't have your looks. And this is a, a very big thing for me to be saying, but I'm saying it to you. Have your looks be the last reason why you think when you go out in public people, and especially I'm talking to women with men, they are hesitant to connect with you. And if you're in a place where you have those types of men who are flipping chairs around and slamming them down in front of the girl they want to talk to, stepping on toes, knocking other females out of the way, leave. That's not where you want to be. And let your friends know. There was That was a question too that the girl asked um, who wasn't approached. She said, should I tell my friends? And let them know you're uncomfortable. Let them know you're not having a good time. Don't make it, you know, all about you. Don't stomp off and cry in a corner, but you know, let them know, hey, uh, I'm probably not gonna stay around for that much longer. I'm gonna go home and find other places where you hang out where that's not the reality. I think sometimes it's good kind of to be a loner because you gotta figure out what works best for you without the input of everybody else. And uh, I think sometimes when you have like a friend group, you want to hang out with them and go with them to every place. If you're not having a good time, break free. Find something else. Okay, um, the last thing that I wanna say is, uh, you know, this to me was another example, both situations, even though I think with the tweet, she was responded to more positively than the young lady whose video was on TikTok and then Twitter and Instagram. I think this is an example of, once again, someone saying an uncomfortable truth to the internet and the internet is always gonna be uncomfortable with women positioning themselves as what is the, the entity that's not wanted. I think we're in a patriarchal society and I think that the role of women or women's realities is oftentimes really reduced. And you know, women are told, well, hey, you're the prize and you know everybody's gonna be chasing after you because that's that's a prize in this society and it's, and it's you. And I think then when a woman is like, well, I'm not having that experience because not every man views every woman as that, um, people are like, no, you're, you're lying. You can't be having a different experience outside of what we've, we've all collectively agreed is the experience of every woman, if that makes sense. I recently saw this online and I've seen this sentiment expressed a lot, just this idea and this concept that every woman has at least four guys who are hitting on her at all times. Every woman has all these different options. And I think a lot of men really, really do believe that. And as a result, they get so upset when a woman says, well, actually this isn't my reality, um, it becomes almost a hatred of that woman expressing that. And um, I think that this situation was another example of that. Anytime a woman says, hey, I'm having a hard time living <laughs> my reality in this society, people are quick to say, well, no, you're not, you can't be because you're a woman. And women are always gonna be, you know, having this, uh, this princess experience because they're women. And so we don't believe you, but I believe you. I have been there, I know what it's like. You're allowed to be upset about it. You're allowed to let, it, it's allowed to hurt. And it doesn't have to always be that way. You owe it to yourself to find other social realities because you don't want to spend too long feeling like you can't be accessed, feeling like you can't be approached because it's going to delay your further development as a human being. And that's not fun. Listen, 
I have shared so many of my dirty stories and my, you know, dating adventures here with you all because that's been part of my development as a human being. And at the end of the day, you know, if I end up at 50 years old and I never got into a relationship, what I know about me is I tried. I, I tried different races, I tried different social situations, and most importantly, I didn't let those extremely hurtful experiences in my emergent years of being looked over and not being approached, I didn't let them block me from ever experiencing situations where I felt wanted. And uh, even though, again, you know, I've, I've never really run off into the sunset with anyone, I can say that I have felt wanted. And it has made a difference in my life. And I wish that for any person who has ever felt like they are being looked over. All right, so that is my opinion on that lovely little subject. And once again, if you sent that video to me weeks ago, I apologize, but at the time I was like, I don't wanna talk about this. But then I saw the tweet and I said, you know what? Gosh, like people continue to have this issue. And as somebody who had it for a really, really long time and still, and still encounters it, but has also experienced the opposite. I do wanna put my two cents in. And um, as always, thank you for watching.